Good morning, good uh, afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 327. Each week yeah, we meet here to uh, answer the questions asked on the uh, um, SEO Questions group on uh, uh, Google+. Plus. Uh, for those uh, with a uh, commercial account and also the dumb SEO questions Facebook group. Google Plus. Google Plus. Remember Google Plus? No. What's that? Mm. Uh, okay. It's sort of kicking. <laughs> anyway, um, with us tonight we have David Rosam. David uh, is a leading internet marketer based in uh, the uh, sunny south of the UK, uh, in West Sussex. Um, you can find David uh, at writingforseo.org and davidrazam.com. Uh, Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net and uh, he's also a Google product expert on the... Uh, um, AdSense uh, community. Um, you can find Masataki at wasaweb.net. All right. Um, our first question tonight is titled um, Mixing Up Content. Um, it's from Marcus Chris. And uh, this is what he, he said. He said, uh, here is my situation. I own a news site. Let's say I have an old yesterday brackets uh, article B. I write a new article A today, but because I don't have enough content, I copy paste a relevant article B in the end of the new article A. I include, um, I don't know what OFC means, uh, proper internal links. I do this every time and in every new article. Um, I write one new paragraph, but in order to increase content when I have little to say, I copy the exact text from a recent relevant article and place it in the end. Um, in, in, uh, is this bad for SEO? From user experience, perceptive is good though. Um, I think I understand what's going on here. Um, I may not, so if I have got it wrong. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure someone will jump in. Um, it seems to me he's creating a lot of uh, duplicate content um, by copy and pasting stuff. Um, and if he does that, um, he's going to start tripping Google's um, duplicate content um, alarms. And uh, I think it's going to end up, I think a lot of his content is going to be ignored by Google. Um, so you're, you're potentially adding new, um, new articles that won't be um, indexed by Google because it'll think it's the same as previous articles. Um, the usual thing to do is to um, is to add to the existing article, so you don't end up with lots of uh, um, lots of uh, duplicate content. Although I guess you could use canonicals to tell Google that uh, the the new one is actually the the one you should be taking care of. But that sounds like a lot of admin to me. Um, moving, um, moving canonicals and how quickly Google will recognize them, I'm not sure. Um, so, um, I would, I would edit the, um, the existing article. Um, if it's news, I would, um, certainly make the, um, the meat of the article right at the beginning of the, um, of the piece, um, get right the new stuff um, as the first paragraph or two, 
because that way you won't um, you won't upset people who say, oh, it's all the same as the last one I read. You're not giving me anything new. So make sure the new stuff is accessible. It'll also help you uh, with Google because Google will probably um, take more notice of the stuff up front and say that's that's good. It, it it's um, I, I'm now um, I'm now desperately trying to 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 think if I've heard any updates about this, but historically google has always tended to 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 look at content the way um a news article is structured in other words the uh, the good stuff is up front and as it goes down you get to the the less good stuff um so you know that's that's a natural way you're you're going to be writing your articles if it's if it's news um yeah that's it i would um uh, i would stop doing what you're doing um and um Add to what you've got already, um, and make sure that the uh, the new the new information is up front. Yeah, I agree with David and uh, Michael Martinez, uh, who's answered the question in the community or the group. Um, I I agree with Michael's point in that I don't think it's a good user experience to have so many similar articles in substance, but with new bits and pieces of information being tacked on. Um, I would update it and, you know, make sure that um, if you have a news article, then make sure you have marked it up as such. And then you say when it's been updated, um, perhaps at the beginning of the piece and then just below the byline say what's been updated, what makes this updated article different from the previous version, um, and then say when those changes were made. As David said, I, you know, you're going to make your life more complicated by having so many pages essentially saying, or essentially having the same content and that's, I think, going to be an administrative nightmare, and I don't think it's a particularly good user experience because the user would go and have a look at the list of articles, and then you have five articles, let's say, that deal with the same issue without perhaps having to add anything to substantive to those. So instead of reading five articles, being up, I, as a user, would like to know what I need to know in one article and up to date. Have, have you got one of those about Brexit anywhere, Mr. Taki? I could do with reading it. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, this. let's not talk about Brexit. <laughs> not in this hangout, please. <laughs> Good bringing yeah, us. That's, but that's a, but that's a good, sorry, but that's a good good example because it's a rolling news, isn't it? So you could have as as a sort of perpetual update, which sort of live updates, which happens with sport events, political events, things like that. You could have that. You could do it that way. Um, or you know, if you write an article and then something changes a couple hours later, the main substance of the article that you already have won't change then just reflect the changes and then i think it's a better practice to say what you've changed uh, as courtesy to your readers um, but i know that many news sites for example will update the articles without telling what you know what's different from the original originally published article um but you know as others said i don't think creating many duplicates is the right way forward. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, I, I like John Bosworth's answer too. Um, he said, your best bet is not to create a new page uh, if you have nothing to say. Anyway, let's uh, move to the next. We'll call that an answer for Marcus Chris. Mm, trouble with my mouse. Mm. Put some cheese in the trap. Thank you, David. 
All right, uh, Bindra Raj Dango asks the question. He says oh, he's confused regarding a choice of a domain name. Uh, he or she said, uh, "Hello, all. I uh, am confused regarding a domain choice. Is it a good idea to have the main keyword as a domain or brand name, uh, like uh, one plumberservice dot com or two? Brandname.com. Um, the uh, the the answer to this is is not the answer to this. Um, no, um, plumberservice.com is a great domain if it was available. Um, it says exactly what you do, um, and it's uh, something that's very memorable. Um, but you ain't going to get plumberservice.com. So um, you then get into thinking about um, uh, about key phrases, uh, key phrases in the the uh, in the domain, um, which was very uh, very fashionable up until about uh, well, however long ago, six years ago. So shall we say it a, a number to pull out the ether? Um, but then Google stopped uh, giving you any kudos for having keywords in the uh, in the domain name. Um, so there's a lot to be said about brand name um, because building your brand is a good thing. Uh, it's a good thing for your business. It's a good thing online. Google likes brands, and Google tends to uh, t tends to to reward brands uh, that that, are, that that have some real value in them. So. Um, there, I, I'm, I'm going towards the brand name um, uh, option here uh, because it will help with you building your business. The other one, though, if you if you have got something really good like plumber service um, that no one's already nabbed, um, I'd be tempted to go for that too, uh, for all the reasons. Um, that I said before, because it's memorable, uh, but not because of its SEO leverage, uh, because it won't give you any more. Um, it won't give you any any more. Um, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. All right, then. Um, also, let me thank uh, people like Ma Michael Martinez and... Um, um, I should have made a note of uh, all of the other people that answered our first question. Mar uh, Michael has uh, definitely answered our second question. Did you want to add anything, Masataki? Nope. Okay, let's go to number three on our run list from Joanna Yana Lasnika. Um, what to index and what not to index in WordPress? Um, Joanna said, I constantly see conflicting data, even from seasoned SEO. Who would have thought? Um, on what to index and not index in WordPress with a site that is a publication which has over 100 plus authors and read, readers use tags to find the right topics. What to, what to index and not index regarding authors? tags and or categories oh this is a this is a wonderful um how long is a piece of string question um there is conflicting advice because it depends so much on the site um you're dealing with um if you end up using Author indexing authors, tags, and categories, you can soon end up with horrendous uh, duplicate content problems. Um, you only really need to get into authors, tags, and categories if you've got a humongously big site with real categorization um, challenges, shall we say. Um, in most cases, I would I would just do in most uh, for most sites I would just go for 
uh, for categories. Um, but it really depends on the site you've got. Um, it's the fact you've got 100 plus authors tends to suggest the site's quite large. Um, most sites only have one author. Um, so you may find that you may find a case for um, for having um, authors tags and categories presented to the uh, uh, to, to the user but again you're going to be have, you're going to have to be careful with uh, uh, with, with the um, with indexing or not indexing these I, I would still say no index um, authors and tags and just go for categories but I'm not seeing the site so um, the I guess the the the, uh, the advice is if you're gonna end up with a load of duplicate content um, and possibly Google misinterpreting and, and listing the wrong uh, the wrong pages um, don't index um, much except as I say categories probably if your authors are are um, are well-known people maybe you want to you, you want to index authors but uh, tags are unlikely to be the way to go because most sites end up with hundreds of the buggers and they can cause as I say duplicate content because we end up with many 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 tags on a on a page and I guess that leads us to how do we how how are the publishers of this site um, and their authors using the tags and the categories have you got a a set of rules about how many they can use on an article or are they sitting there merrily slapping categories and tags on the page so there's a, there's also a kind of editorial stroke disciplinary question as well um so yes uh consensus you'll you won't get one um because it's very very much uh, a site by site um decision thank you david All right, let's uh, move on to the next. If I can find where my mouse goes. Okay, we're halfway through. Question four on our run list is titled a strategy to get backlinks for a new website from Shabir Shaikh. Um, he wants to know what strategy he should use. Um, as Ryan Jones says, build something that people think is so cool or so good that they want to share it with their friends. There's also some old guy, um, I don't actually recognize him. He's, he's underneath Ryan Jones who says, reach out to your clients and suppliers. And that, that's quite a, a good idea too. Um, it's the problem. Pro problem is let's, let's be serious about this um the problem is there's the usual uh subtext to this question which is that there is a way a safe way of building hundreds or thousands of backlinks to a site and it's it's bad don't do it do not go on fiverr or whatever and get someone to build you hundreds of thousands of, 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 of backlinks, um, it will not do you any good. Um, so the, the purest strategy is, as Ryan says, build something that people think is so cool or so good that they want to share it with their friends. What's the point? They want to link to it rather than share it with their friends. Let's be specific. Um, yeah. Thank you, David. All right. Number five on our run list, um, Google is not reading the sitemap. 
Um, Philip Rinaldi wants to know, uh, it's a do domain migration question. Has anyone recently migrated domain names? I have a website that we recently migrated and for some reason, Google is not reading the sitemap. All tests have passed and Google successfully reads the sitemap, but zero URLs are discovered. Is this because of using the change of address tool in Google Search Console? I have had this happen, but it's it's happened with um, it's happened with um, with WordPress sites. And it's generally because Yoast or something that, or, or a plugin that's handling the sitemap um, has got confused. Um, and sometimes you end up with the wrong URLs or all sorts of odd things going. Um, and what I've done is, um, is explicitly delete the sitemap and get the thing to, to rebuild it. Um, and normally that's that's a case of just deleting it and then it gets on the the, the plugin gets on and rebuilds it um, I'm not sure that that's the answer to this question because I don't know whether it's a WordPress site but I have had it happen and it's just been a case of uh, um, uh, of kicking the uh, the plugin that's uh, that's handling uh the uh the site map the other thing that that strikes me is perhaps um perhaps you've got uh indexing blocked but this is a site map question no i i'll 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 wonder whether we've uh whether this is a uh a wordpress site with a uh, a plugin that needs to boot, boot up the rear end Thank you, David. There are lots of other answers here as well, so they're probably good too. But I didn't manage to read them while I was uh, while I was thinking about um, WordPress and plugins. Hmm. And um, one thing I thought was good uh, because we don't have a lot of the ladies uh, in our group, um, but Brenda Mitchell uh, made an excellent comment. And Becky Westmoreland said what Brenda said. Um, it's great, great to see. All right, let's call that an answer, will we, Massa? Yes. Okay, let's go to the next. And this one from E. Dieter Martin. It's using status code 307 instead of the expected 301. Um, e. Dieter Martin said, um, Squarespace redirects HTTP links to their HTTPS counterpart using a status code 307 instead of the expected 301. Does anyone see a problem with this uh, for indexing and search results? Um. Hmm. I don't think I don't think there's a problem here, but uh, I think Jim, this is this is more of your kind of area than mine. But I I I don't think there's a problem. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem, right? But three or seven is temporary, isn't it? To be honest, I would have to Google it. I don't want 307. Yes, and it's 307 is similar to 302, whereas I think 308 is similar to 301. 307 temporary redirect, it says here. I think, in terms of search engines, it shouldn't matter because um, as long as a resource is responding with 307, then Google will realize that it's moved on to another place. Similar way to 302 being considered after a while as essentially the same as 301s. Um, I'm not so sure about other um, 
other places, as it were, where you know the three hundred one, three hundred two difference makes a, makes a difference, um, because you know it's either found and temporarily redirected, or it's moved and then permanently so. So um, there may be issues um, with other things, but for search engines, I don't think three hundred seven would matter in any way. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, oh, that, that link that um, that Scott Clark gave um, uh, is is interesting. Um, it says that Google says it doesn't matter which redirect you use. All past page rank. What, what's page rank? Hang on. How old is this piece? June the thirteenth, twenty sixteen. Oh, it's three years old. Um, so this may or may not still apply. But, yeah, I, think, um, I mean, I think, um, well, I don't think Google's treatment of 302s have changed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's wrap this one up, but we'll go to the next. It's um, a question from Sampath Virchuru, who has a small doubt related to SEO. You're not alone there, mate. Um, one of my blog posts is ranking in the seventh position, but my URL looks like www.abc.com slash 2017 slash 16 slash my um, keyword. Um, I suppose if, if, if remove the 2017 slash 16 in my URL, um, is it helpful to get more rank or will it affect our previous ranking? Well, can I jump in and just say, um, look, don't, don't worry about what your URLs look like, um, but definitely uh, if you change your URL, that, that page which has you know, been building up authority over time um, will just disappear into thin air. Um, don't do it. Don't just don't don't touch it. I mm. feel like yeah. feel like getting cross about it. <laughs> don't touch it, or your ranking will fall off. Yeah. And <laughs> it's, it, you know, you're making your life more difficult. For what purpose? Mm. You know, if you change your URL, then you have to redirect existing one to a new one. That is an additional. Um, and that that's an, an additional administration, which could go wrong. <laughs> um, it is still a redirect, so it does. You know, we're talking about milliseconds, but that still does slow site load. Well, page load again, because a browser would have to go and follow the redirect to reach that place. Okay, that probably wouldn't matter at all in the grand scheme of things, but still, that adds. You know, <laughs> a few milliseconds, um, and there are a few benefits in doing so. I mean, it's not as if because you change the URL, your page is going to rank better just because you've changed the address. So, as David and as Jim said, don't touch it unless there's a really good reason to do so, and there doesn't seem to be a good reason. Thank you, Masataki. Yep. Okay, let's um, go to the next. It's number eight on our run list, which must mean that we've done them all. Uh, Vishal Gupta asks a question. It's titled External Links with RHEL No Opener. Um, do, do external links with a RHEL No Opener attribute flow page rank? How does Google view such links? I what think, um, said. sorry, carry on, Mastaki. No, I just was going to say what Michael Martinez said. Yeah, I think he's right as well. Okay. All right, do we have any other items of uh, general business? Because I know when I click this link, it'll say, thank you for watching. Well, we could talk about Brexit. 
No. 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 <laughs> the fatigue has set in. <laughs> I think I died from it many months ago. You do it when Tim comes back. <laughs> I think even he doesn't talk about it anymore. <laughs> okay. I, um, if, if you're still with us, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, your interest in, in what we do makes uh, what we do worthwhile. And for that, we are truly grateful. We're also grateful to the people uh, uh, who answer questions throughout the week, uh, people like... Um, Michael Martinez uh, is one that stands out, uh, Dave Elliott, um, so many others. Uh, but, uh, you yeah, know, we, we, we thank you and uh, we really appreciate it. We we're also very appreciative of David Roseanne and um, Masataki Wasa for, for uh, um, stepping up. And... We'll be back at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. Um, but for now, it's uh, good night and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>